Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for The Mindful Eye and The Daily Critique. Today's image was submitted by Sherwin, who is an intermediate photographer. Sherwin says the photograph was inspired by seeing a fantastic sky and then searching for a foreground to complete the shot. And this photo was made with a Nikon D70 converted to be sensitive to the infrared spectrum of light. We'll talk just a little bit more about that in a minute. The lens here was a 12 to 24 zoom at 12 millimeters, so after the conversion here, the effective focal length is 18 millimeters, so very wide, and at ISO 200 and f/8, this, the file was exposed for one two fiftieth of a second. Just a quick mention about the the infrared version here of the D70. We'll put up a link to Max Max. They're one of the best companies that does these conversions. If you send them a camera, I think it's around four hundred and fifty dollars to do the conversion. And I'm getting ready to uh, do this myself, so hopefully I'll be talking more about shooting with an infrared converted camera and, and then dealing with the images in Photoshop and so on and so forth. This image has a couple of sort of classic hallmarks of shooting a landscape with an IR converted camera or with an RR filter on a regular camera. Um, the real dark blue here, the blue part of the sky, and uh, the clouds uh, popping off of that in a real dramatic way. You can get this effect with heavy polarization or with other types of filtration. This is sort of a classic look in infrared, so great choice here with this real dramatic sky to go infrared. And another uh, classic look that you can get from infrared is uh, glowing foliage. So seeing this tree uh, glowing, you particularly get a sense of that out in this part um, of the image. So just uh, just wanted to mention a couple of things about uh, infrared and I can totally see Sherwin being motivated by the sky here to take a shot. Just a just an amazing sky in this image. I want to talk about that for just a minute. There's a real strong sense of simplicity, even formal symmetry in the background, particularly with the way that this has been framed. We get a real strong sense of uh, this shape in the middle uh, of the image that can be split almost right down uh, uh, the middle of that part of the sky and turned into two ideas that are very similar. And then the framing on either side, the overall shape, is very similar. Um, but there's also some uh, feelings of dynamic things within the context of the sky. This negative space over here on the left hand side, and it's interesting to see these two shapes on the ends of the frame are the same, but within this shape you have a, a real dramatic difference. You have white surrounded by black here and black surrounded by white uh, here, but pretty strong sense of formal symmetry, but very simple, uh, very graphic, and uh, very dramatic, real powerful sense of movement in the sky. And I think Sherwin has picked a great foreground here to play off of uh, this real strong feeling of sweeping quality of line in both positive and negative space shapes up here in the sky particularly out in here. The split rail fence and the way it arcs through the image plays beautifully off of the sky. And then including this tree is another main subject, if not the main subject of the image. Um, really powerful anchor in the image and uh, really beautiful the way the tree really rhymes off the background in a couple of ways. Um, it's, it's essentially the same shape as this middle section of sky and the texture is very very similar. When you look at the texture up here um, in, the, in the hearts of the tops of the leaves at the ends of the groups of branches uh, you get a real strong sense of that same texture repeating over and over again in the sky. Um, lots of things to, to love about this image. You know and another thing to mention here is um, IR um, infrared uh, works really well in super hard light. And you can tell from the shadows here the light's just banging into the scene. Another great reason to potentially, if you have the money, to uh, have an IR converted camera um, as part of your bag of creative, technical things, equipment things that you can work with. When I think about perfect world improvement for this image, there are a couple of things that I think about. One of the main points that I wanted to make today is so much of the time when I'm working traditionally, I'm drawn to something that's beautiful like the sky and I'm trying to shoot it in a way that's beautiful and I may be thinking about visual elements of design a lot more than I typically do if I'm going to shoot from the tripod and do a contemplative shot of a landscape or architecture. So much of the time, I'll do exactly what Sherwin did. I'll react to something that really draws my eye that I feel is beautiful, in this case the clouds. And then a basic sort of discussion that I have with myself is how do I want to shoot this? Do I want to work with formal symmetry or dynamic symmetry? And a lot of times if the main subject is, is formally symmetrical, 
that I might start to consider arranging the other subjects, foreground and middle ground, in a, a formally symmetrical way. And that's one variation I might think about here. I'd love to see what this looked like if you just dead centered the tree so that it came up in this cloud bank and did this, had these two ideas that rhyme the tree, a background that rhymes it, and then sort of trying to work out a section of fence that kind of wraps more around uh, the foreground. Don't even know if that's possible from looking at this. I mean, uh, depending on which way the clouds are moving, you know, if they're moving straight overhead, then I can imagine having to move over to the right uh, to get the tree to show up in this space over here. And then that might not work with the fence or the shadow or other ideas. Just a thought. Is there a way to shoot this uh, th that's more formally symmetrical? And the other thing that I think about in this image, and it also has to do with possibly moving over there, is um, number one, as beautiful as the high contrast is up here, down in here where these rocks really start to pop out and create a sort of a chaotic pattern of high contrast, that starts to really pull my eye away from the graphic simplicity of the thing that Sherwin was drawn to in the first place, which is the top part of the image. And the other thing that's happening, uh, the sort of second thing that's happening, the way this has been framed, is that this area really flattens out. And because it flattens out and there's so much visual contrast and movement everywhere else, this starts to become a main subject when um, there's really not anything there uh, that's sort of interesting or is supporting or balancing something else in the image. If I just had to work with this the way that it is, one of the things that I might think about doing is trying to darken this a little bit but coming in and doing quite a bit of digital gardening and getting rid of all of these little high contrast areas. If I darken, that makes this recede, so it pushes back on it. It's not as important visual anymore. If I get rid of contrast, little local contrast in there, that does the same thing. It makes it recede. And I could even see coming in and spending a lot of time and digitally gardening out all the high contrast in here. Uh, if I'm going to go for a dynamic symmetry, then to me it would really help if these areas down in here in the image, the fence, the area uh, right here behind the fence and this area in here separated in the same way that the background is separating in a very dramatic way. And I could do that by potentially digitally gardening. Uh, and so here's just a start on that work. Here's a variation where I came in and I darkened that middle ground area and I got rid of a lot of the contrast. And then you could start to sort of ask yourself visually the question, what if we got rid of the contrast um, as we see it through the fence? And the fence just became a singular idea and it popped out. And then we continued to sort of push this dynamic symmetry in a way that's more graphic than what would happen. Um, having said all that, it's a really beautiful landscape image and it's a great example of uh, you know why having the infrared choice can be a real powerful creative tool for you um, if you shoot landscapes. And we want to say a big thank you to Sherwin for sharing this beautiful landscape image with us on the Mindful Eyes Daily Critique.